Hello, this is the next episode of Logistic Tutorial, and today we are going to be looking at a, a load of miscellaneous items, starting with the counter. The counter can be found under memory, and the counter is similar to a register, only it counts. When the, the it's triggered, it will increment or decrement by one. Increments, add by one, decrements, subtract by one. So, what we're going to do is for now just have a button uh, here and connect that to here. And when you press the button, the number gets bigger. So, also it's like here, so it just goes up like that. So, that's a number, and to clear it, we can another button. This is going to be our clear button and connect that to here. And this button, this here, is if it's true, it will, well, as it says here, when it's 1, it, if the count is 0, it decrements. So, what this means is if we put a pin here, it doesn't necessarily have to increment or decrement. So, but now we've only pressed this, it adds, but now when this is true, it subtracts by 1. So this counter can be is very useful because now what we can do is I suppose you could say we harness its counting abilities and now what we can do is add a clock so it will continuously clock through and loop through all of the different numbers. So what we're gonna do is use a, a, a counter, clock, whatever, whatever it's called. Press it north and we're going to keep the clear there and when you click on it you may see this action on overflow so this basically means when it gets to the the largest number because it's 8 bits we're going to make it so that it will uh, stay at value so stay at value gah doesn't like me there we go uh, <laughs> Now it will, uh, every time it, uh, when it gets to its largest number of FF, it will say there. For this demonstration, we're also going to use ROM. So here is our ROM, and it's going to be 8 bit the direct, I can't speak, and a 7 bit later. So now our address is going to attach to the answer because this is going to pick which address. What we're going to do is press this button, attach to the zero, which will clear it to one. And also what we're going to do is get a TTY. And I'll just demonstrate what changing the color looks like. So what we're going to, we can make it so that the color is um, white. And the back, because this is a bit uh, opaque, so you can, uh, uh, transparent, so we can look through it. So what we're going to do is make it so it's black as the night and this will be white and then no, the background this will be black look like a old no that's not exactly what I was looking for the background will be black and the foreground will be white that's what I wanted so now that's going to go there this is, when it's black though it's quite difficult to see this sometimes but when you hover over it there's our data and we're going to connect that there. Also, this will connect to the update, our clock. And uh, one that clears the screen will also be connected to our clear screen button. So, what we can do is it will read a 7 bit number from our ROM. And there you go, this is the hex editor, so I'm gonna add some random numbers and I'll be back. I'm back and finally I have uh, typed in random numbers and not copied and pasted half of it. And we're gonna see now when we press Control K that it will now scroll through each of these characters. Some of them won't print because they're non printable characters. but they will print whatever's here. Now if we
make the tick frequency a bit quicker, we'll see what it's going to print. So this, what this is doing is every clock pulse it is scrolling through all of the numbers, and uh, and that's uh, making a greater uh, one bigger of a, a, the address every a. So and what and whatever's at a, it will go through the uh, wire to the date to ask the next character to write. And when it pulses, it'll print that character that is in the ROM. The nice thing about this is it's orderly, and with the counter, we don't have to just use the randomizer to pick a completely random number from anywhere. Let's see what it prints. Actually, pause that for a second. We need to make this a bit bigger. So, uh, you can just use rows, and you can make that 64. Too big. We can make that... 40. Okay, let's not make that 40. Um, let's make that 24. Or, and you can uh, make the rows, columns, whatever, same thing. You can make them 40. There you go. We can just select everything, uh, move it to the side. That's one neat thing about this, when you're moving large amounts of space, it will actually reconnect all your wires to the same point, which is very useful. So, let's start the ticks again. Now we have a much bigger space to print everything to. You may notice it's a bit similar to what it was before, that's because I copied half of it. And some of them aren't printable characters, so they're not going to all do something. So they all look a bit different. Some of them are making new lines, that would be something like 0A or something, or 0E. And now it's scrolled through all of them, it's stopped. See, it's at FF and it stopped, that's because we made it stay at value. This is a demonstration of the counter, and the counter is a very useful item, and thanks for watching, goodbye.